Sometimes it's difficult to be subtle with the sponge because it comes off aggressively fast. It removes the charcoal. You see how much contrast. The, the shadows are really amazing to work with because you need a full tonal range, but... And so I have the... I need to pull this down a little bit, don't I? The eyebrow approaching up a little too high up in here. I need to keep the direction, the angle of the face, do you see? So this needs to go, yeah. We can pull some more of this, pull it back out, pull that eye not close to the to the face, to the nose. Okay, and then just a little bit more light up in here. And at times I will use my charcoal to a point here to actually push the charcoal around from a line. I don't want a, a hard line outlining her nose. I need it to be darker there to show the change of form, but it has to be very subtle. And um, we don't have a lot of lines on the body, so sometimes I find this is better because I can push the material around. I'm kind of darkening the area that's too light, but I'm also sort of pulling out the stuff that's too dark and swishing it around. And now you can see I've got a little bit of... I find that this paper, the aroma paper, is a, is kind of... I like the texture sometimes, but it's a little bit annoying at times to figure out. So here you see I'm using a mall stick, and um, it allows me to go into the middle here and feel. You know, in my stone carving videos, when I talk about I need to feel where I am on the marble, it's the same thing for the drawing. I don't just go in here and scribble like this. I, I need to feel where I am, uh, as you would proprioception, that your body knows where it is in space, that kind of thing. Um, so this, I can rest against the edge of the board, not touch the drawing at all, and then use my hand to rest it here. There's actually, you can see the shadow maybe of the stick. So there's a lot of space, and then I, I can pull it far away if I want to really have not any finger touching or anything like that. So that's what I'm working on here is trying to get... I love drawing in the shadows, but it's a lot of back and forth for me because the tone gets too light, it gets too dark. I'm not happy with the soft edge. I'm not happy with that art edge. Um, uh, need to, again, I need to... I tend to use a knitting needle because it's nice and long and most of the time it's straight or straight enough. See, the corner of the mouth, I've got to have it coming down in this way. She's got a full lower lip. I just want it to meet down here somewhere. And I'm, I'm exaggerating right now because I need to figure out where stuff is. So the nose slants down and the eyes slant down. So I want to pull this eye here, coming down a little bit, to pull that back, to get that down. Because if I creep it up like this, I've lost the, the form of the egg shape of the skull. And so we don't want to soften some of this up again. And then the eyebrow, I want to make sure it doesn't become a unibrow, especially because if it's going to happen on one side, it'll happen on the other. You know, a unibrow doesn't exist without the co cooperation of both partners, right? Both sides of the face in, in this case. And she's not a freely capable. All right, I feel like that comes up too high. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the point right here where this touches the edge of the, the profile of the face. And um, I wanna make sure it's parallel, the corners of the mouth, the corners of the nostrils, the corners of the eyes. And then I come here to the corner here of this should be there. It looks like it's kind of going okay, but I think maybe it's not going down fast enough. Look at how fast my fingers take it off. It's a nice blending tool at times, but it's better for pastel, I think.
All right. I want to simplify. With charcoal, you don't have the full tone range that you have with oil paint, and thus you do a lot of simplifying. I actually really enjoy drawing in the shadows because I feel like it's a challenge, especially because I don't have the tonal range in uh, charcoal that I want. So right now what I've been working on is getting soft edge between the hair and the face, but also I'm trying to get some roundness into the cheek without exaggerating the tones. So I have a shadow coming from under, behind the nose here, coming from there, because the cheek po poofs out a little bit, and therefore it's going to catch a little bit of light, even though the entire side of this face is in shadow. But one thing that I like about photographing things is the photograph exaggerates the tone. It's a bit like using the black mirror, where... I don't have one here. Here, I have my phone. Whoops, of course I touched my phone now. Let's turn it off. Okay, so here, this is like a black mirror. You can use the black mirror. I'm not sure if I'm tilting this well for the camera, but this surface here is a dark reflective material. And what it does is, if I can get the viewpoint good for the camera here, um, I can see the tones in her face. Maybe pull it back here, look a little different. Uh, I can't really tell what I'm doing. I think that's her head. Anyway, it's supposed to work that what it does is it simplifies the tone, a lot like squinting does. And um, that means that you can start to see, right, right now when I look at it with a naked eye, I see there's a little bit of light, a little bit of light, a little bit of light. It's darker here. It's dark here at the jawbone and then the ear. But I can see it's a little darker here, which I wanted because the eye is starting to go around to the side of the face. Um, I need it darker here because that's receiving less light because it's a plane slanting down. However, the thing is with the shadows and especially